Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. This is, this is how was your, fun. How was your Thanksgiving? I didn't do any. I didn't do anything, so it was fine. Me too. <laughs> well, I did cook, but I didn't do a big cook up. Um, oh yeah, something simple, and um, then I promptly fell asleep because I could. <laughs> I mean, no sense in doing something big, but for like not too many people. Yeah, yeah, it was a nice quiet day. Thank God it's come and gone. Exactly. Uh, but I'm excited about today. Not only is it Friday, yay, end of another week, but we're going to be going over two shows that um, we haven't done before. I know. That's what, and they're interesting shows. That's really mm -hmm. why I'm excited, actually. Okay. So which one do you want to do first? Let's do, oh, International Spaghetti. I should have been at uh, Mama P's house. She had it all going on. Oh wait, let's welcome everybody in. You you do that, Jamal. I'm so rude. Oh my god. Sorry. <laughs> Ow. Hey everyone. Um, who do we have here? Okay, so like you said, Mama P, um, Gina, we have Trey, Stephanie, Tra um, Gina B. Um, as opposed to Gina Maxi, who I said before, uh, da, 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 V Hargett, hello, um, and who else? Oh, hey, Black Lavender. Was it you yesterday that showed that beautiful roast on on IG? If it was, it looked yummy, and I'm pissed I didn't get an invite. Um. Well, that's everybody in who's in here for now. As you come in, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, the like button. We really do appreciate it. And it helps us get out there and get more chatsters in the mix. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are known for changing things up all the time. All righty. So, Jamal, have you decided which show you want to start with? I'm, I'm always a fan of going in order, so we can start with uh, Whitney and my big, fat, fabulous life. <laughs> okay, let me just pull up my notes real quick. Okay, so um, I've watched this in seasons past, and okay. we were talking about it, and I couldn't believe that we're on season eight of this show. It, like, It didn't feel like it had been on that long. Yeah, because um, two, in two of the years, they did mm -hmm. two seasons. That's why... And there's more seasons oh, than years. Oh, yeah. But um, but this season, she's like the end of last season, she got engaged. So this mm -hmm. season, um, she's engaged. And um spoiler alert, spoiler alert, we all know how this ends. They showed they showed it, they showed it at the beginning of the season. I'm like, okay. Well, but then they, they wanted they wanted to give the journey of like how they got there. I'm like, oh, okay, I got you. The proposal was kind of contrived. I'm not gonna lie. That confused me, seeing as they've only been dating a short time. I was like, oh, yes. okay. I'm like, yes. I mean, and he I, came I, out I was, of nowhere. I was confused for someone who's had just started watching. I was like, he proposed? And then I'm like, oh, this is cool. I thought they'd been together for a while. Then I'm like, oh, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. you're new. Yeah. Yeah. And and a lot of people, like, her, her inner circle of friends had questions about him. Oh, like, they yes. never got answers on. Um, but, you know, whatever. She accepted, her. and there you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> I, was, I was happy for her. And I was happy for both of them. Like, okay, this is what you guys really want to do. You're just going with the flow i say do it i'm all i'm all for that if you feel it you both feel it you know she remarked she wasn't getting younger because she's like what 36 or something yeah she's in her 30s yeah and so she was feeling that and i'm like if he's ready for it, I'm like, go for it i don't know i couldn't make a good assessment of it because we haven't known him at all and i questioned his motives because she's had a history of relationships where the guys wanted something from her whether it like showtime like being on airtime on the show mm -hmm. or or just not really seeing her for who she is right you know um 
Yeah, so she hasn't had the best history at relationships, so. I just always feel like based on this and based on the way her friends were acting, like she and what you just said, just taking all that into account, mm -hmm. she doesn't really vet her people well. She throws but, herself heart in, like balls to the wall, which is kind of scary in this day and age. Because she's more invested um, to me. Based on these couple episodes, I don't have the history of the show. I just started watching it because she looks interesting. Her, this seems more an old school reality TV. So I'll watch. And it just looks like she just jumps all in. Mm -hmm. Like she's like all in. And she seems to always, she seems to be more invested than, in him than he is in her. And he, Chase strikes me as he proposed. But then he's not really all in, which which made me look at him kind of sideways too. Mm, I well, we'll see that just as fast as he wrote in, it'll be just as fast as he exits out. Um, so uh, hold but in on, fairness, if we're mm -hmm. gonna be really really fair about mm -hmm. the situation, and I know I know we're gonna get into this, but mm -hmm. neither one wants to give in but in fairness to her he flipped the script on her because he was supposed to move to greensboro is where she's at right. and that was the plan that's because he didn't know if that he even said like he didn't know if that bar thing was going to come through that's what he really wanted to do since it looked like it wasn't going to go through he made that commitment but when the bar deal came through for him he was excited and he wanted to do it but my whole thing is this, when you commit to something, you proposed, you've committed to move, he, I really feel he should have stuck by that commitment. That's just my personal opinion. You probably have some bar opportunities and was it, is it Charlotte? She lives in Charlotte, right? Yeah. Her parents she, are in Greensboro. Okay, mm -hmm. let me show the city's right. No Wait a minute. Can... He's not in. She. He's not in Greensboro. Her parents are in Her, Greensboro. Yeah, I was, saying, I was. I was getting like she's in Charlotte. Right. Parents in Greensboro. He's in Wilmington. Wilmington. Oh, okay. So there we go. For me, there was no reason why he couldn't have done what in Charlotte what he was doing in Wilmington. And I thought, in my opinion, in Charlotte he might have had more opportunities to do what he wanted to do. So I, I kept looking at him like, sir, like you propose, like you propose, and. Baby girl is on reality TV, got her own show, has her own side business too. She's a hustler. Why would you not move to support your woman? Even at least until you find your own thing. I'm all for people finding their own thing. You are supposed. Uh, this is just again my opinion. You support your woman when she has more going on than you do, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, because she had, well, she just left Greensboro. She had that dance studio business. Right. Mm -hmm. And she moved to Charlotte. I'm not sure what she's doing in Charlotte. But, so you know, she's. Ryan. I think his name oh, is. yes. The guy on, on YouTube or something like that. Yeah, Chase's best YouTube? friend. They're, they're yes. in business together. So she has her hustle. Yeah. And I want to know, because I'm I'm a bit lost in this storyline as well. Stephanie says, I thought the bar deal came, um, never came until after the proposal. Yeah, that was my point. So, Stephanie, what I was saying is, since the bar proposal came in after, after his proposal to Whitney, he was supposed to stick to his commitment and move to Charlotte. Because you work in construction and you want to own um, a bar. You want to own... What, could what done, exactly done is his commitment to the bar, though? Just being a bartender? Or has he invested money into this? He's invested money into it. But does that require him to be physically there? Um, Because so he could have invested and then gone to Charlotte. So typically what happens from knowing a couple people who've done this, what they do within the, the first year, generally anyone who's invested money into the business typically hand, handle some part of the day-to-day. -day. That's how. Did, that's just the only way I know it. Did he talk to Whitney about this? Because... He talked He talked to her before the proposal. He was under the impression he, it wasn't going through based on financials. Then he proposed. Then afterwards, the proposal, they're like, hey, 
by the way, we, we, we got to go. We're doing it. And he just decided, he, he decided on his own to go ahead with the bar. He didn't go to Whitney and say, he had already proposed at that point. So there's no, he really had no way going. But he should have still, he should have not done that deal and went to Charlotte with Whitney. Oh, shit. Because, sir, you you work in construction. I'm sure you can find that in Charlotte. And then if you really want to invest in the business, you can find the business in Charlotte to invest in. I just don't see you, why did you have to stay in Wilmington. There was, to me, there was no reason. He's just made it unnecessarily messy. Yes. Mm-hmm. We've got a, a quick question here, a side note. How can you be a mod in a pair live? <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> Jamal is a is a master at multitasking. He's so much better than me. I suck at it. <laughs> okay, so all right. So this basically breaks down to a breakdown of communication between these two. And, yes. And so now he's trying to get her to move there. Can she do her her hustle with that uh, workout stuff? Anywhere, or does she have to be in Charlotte? I think Charlotte, being a bigger city, is where the money is for her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Whitney and her mom, they drive up to see him, Chase, Mm -hmm. um, to see his, um, his home that he has in Wilmington. He greets them with a beautiful banner. Um, the place looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, but the ladies have booked, um, separate accommodations, which is very, like, I appreciate Whitney for doing that because, you know, y'all are only just engaged. Right. (laughs) you're not going to be coming up into his house with your mom. You know, you're going to stay with your mom separately. Like, I think that's like really nice and charming and, and old fashioned. So I appreciate that she thought of it like that. Oh yeah. Um, and then um, this is where he starts throwing out, well, you could come and live here. Meaning like she can move to Wilmington and leave everything that she has behind for his, um, his, his venture. Right. Um, do you like the way how he did that? No, because I, I don't agree with him doing that, period. <laughs> okay. Period. I thought no. I was the only one who felt uncomfortable no. about it. No, no. And plus, according to the chat, he has roommates. No. You expect her to move there so y'all can buy a house together? No. Sir, you sound crazy. She has a home, mm-hmm. probably already paid mm-hmm. for. She has a business. She's on reality TV. I don't understand why these men do this. Why these men cannot understand that when your woman has much more going on than you, it is your responsibility to move, support your woman, and help her hustles grow. And then down the line, you can do your own thing. Wow. He just he just annoyed, he just annoyed me with the whole thing. It shouldn't even been done. Okay. So um, they say they'll talk later about it. So then they they decide to um, go to the place where his sister works, a, a mm-hmm. restaurant. Um, and they start talking about the wedding and various venues. And again, one wants the mountains, one wants the beach. It's like they're never on the same page. Because Chase is stupid. He doesn't understand how this works. <laughs> this is how this is how it works. When it comes down to weddings, <laughs> your job pretty much as the groom is to support the woman in the planning. It's pretty much all about her anyway, because let's be honest, we just gonna be in a black tux standing up there anyway. It's, it's all about her. It's her day. You, when she says, okay, I want to do this, unless it's coming down to financials, you say, yes, baby. Yeah, I'm there to support you. What do you need? And you let her plan the way she wants to plan it. If she wants to be on the beach, the mountains, in the middle of the road, you let her do it. That 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 that's just the way it is. He's he's causing problems for no reason. It's just very awkward. It, the it, two of them are very awkward. Like it's like they honest, never met before in life. Right. We're being if we're being honest, men, we don't care about the wedding. Let's be honest. Like the planning, we don't want to have any involvement. When I want to me to be married, when a woman has like you know. I'm going to have my maid of honor 
and six bridesmaids. Fantastic. The eight of you can plan this wedding. You tell me what date, <laughs> what time, and I will show up two hours before to take a shower, jump in my jump in my jump in my tux, and I'll be standing out there waiting for you. If you need me to go pick up something for you, let me know. I'll do all that little stuff, the air and stuff. I'll handle that. But you, you, I'm here to support you. And Chase is not doing that. And that's his main problem. Oh, this is another comment from Stephanie. Um, the fact that he never asked her father for permission to marry was shocking and showed me how thoughtless he is. They're, they're Southern. Yeah, I think her dad would have appreciated being, being asked for, you know, his permission for her to marry. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. I, like her, I like her parents too. I Wait, like hold parents. <laughs> Was that why you were doing that just now, Jamal? Yeah, for You're Sandra. so cute. Love you, Sandra. <laughs> Hi, Bria. Um, okay, so, oh, let me go back to my notes. Um, all right, so Chase's sister comes over. Um, she does something that's really odd. She calls the place where Chase works a questionable bar. Why is it questionable? Why it seemed kind of cool to me, but why is your sister like placing doubt on your current job? in front of your fiance and her mom, like. Because she questions the relationship. Oh, so she's with us. Okay, yeah. all right, we like her, we like I her. Think we're, I think we're with everybody though. We all think it's questionable because it's like, he's not like, you see that she's all excited and happy and looking forward to it. He doesn't seem to be looking forward to it. He seems to be just there. So do you get the impression that he's already checked out? Of the relationship, yeah. Yikes. Okay. I think I think he just did that for the cameras. Okay. That's just my personal opinion. I think, I think he, or it's it's one or two things. Either he just did this for the cameras, or he really expected her to follow him. It's one of those two things. Because okay. I think had he. I think if she has like, okay, I'll just pick up and move, I think he would be all in. But since he he she's not doing what he wants, he's not he's not happy. Mm. That's the thing. Because like he wants to, he's like he it makes it like I want to be with you. I'm offering you to move here, but she's gotta pack up and move clear across the state just so you can run a bar. I'm sorry. You've lost your mind. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. You want me? You want me move farther away from my parents, leave my businesses to come yeah, here for that's to come here thing. for a bar to come here for a bar that you don't one hundred percent own. You have lost your mind. Yeah, like okay, her parents are getting older, and they have had health challenges. Like, um, oh, yes. Abs had the the stroke. That I mean, she looks great considering. You know, um, last season, she's made amazing progress. Um, but her dad also has health problems as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he's still working. Like, he, he can retire. I can explain that. So, and I, I asked somebody I know. I'm like, why didn't you have, like, he's, he's 75. Yeah. Oh. He, still work. he still works. He's all, the reason why I still work is this. He said, I just don't want to be like my, um like my parents and retire early and like just sitting around waiting for life to go by. He said work keeps him, work keeps him, his mind engaged. And he feels mm. that as long as his mind's engaged, he's hoping that he won't develop symptoms like his mother did because his mother um, passed away from Alzheimer's. Oh. So working for him keeps his mind engaged, keeps it going. And he's like, I still feel good. I can understand that. Guys. And he's all, and honestly, COVID, because he, because he was going to retire, like, what, earlier this year, he said? I just saw him a couple weeks ago when I came back to work. He's like, yeah, I have fun retiring at the early year, but then COVID hit, so I can't travel. So, <laughs> mine as well works. 
So that's the other part of it. Yeah. He, did, okay. he he's like, well, I I can work from home. I, but yeah, he's try. not. Hmm? He's still he's not working from home. No, he is working from home. Well, no, now he is probably. Yeah. But remember, that was one of the issues towards the end of of this I episode. About, I, was about, I was about the person I was talking about. The person I know. Oh, okay. I was explaining, like he would have retired yeah. for not for COVID, but since he could work from home, now he's like, why not keep working? <laughs> he's all oh, still good because he had planned to retire and travel. Oh but, my god! Yeah, so many plans have gone down the toilet this year. I sympathize with everyone. Oh my god. Okay, so they leave the sister's restaurant. Um and Whitney takes her mom to the bed and breakfast so that they can check in. They're sitting down talking. They decide they decide to call her dad um to um discuss, you know, Chase's new proposition of her moving there. Yeah. And you know her dad calls a spade a spade. Yeah. I and love her dad. he's like, that don't make no sense. And I love him for it. Right. I love him for it. He he just says to her, that's dumb. Like, no, you've got a, a, a great business where you're at. You left here to go to Charlotte. You got that business. What are you doing? Right. And, you know? and I go back to this. And it's the old thing with men and their egos. Mm -hmm. When your woman is out producing you, if what she makes is more than double than what you make. You need to just leave what you're doing if it's not concrete. Go support her, work with her to build her, to build her up even further, and then you could work for her. And you guys, you guys build together. She's the talent or whatever. You're the backbone of support. But most men don't see it that way. They feel like, well, I need to have my own. Yeah, it's cool to have her own. But you have to realize when some, when your partner or soon-to-be partner is just, the earning potential is much more than you. There's nothing wrong with taking a step back. So you know what? Let me support you. Let me work for you and help propel you even more forward. That's what you do. He's of the old school mindset of, well, this is what I want to do. This is a great opportunity. A great opportunity means you own the bar outright. A great opportunity mm -hmm. means you got a very good deal on rent and on the business itself. You only bought into a piece of this business. And we don't know what piece that is. Is it 5%? Is it 10%? Because we know you don't own it because you're behind the bar working. So, yeah. I know, but now that, you know, in the chat it said, you know, he has roommates. Uh, how are you bringing your fiance into a roommate situation? Like, what part of that makes sense to him? Uh, I mean, I, yeah. unbelievable. Okay, so wait, let's move on to the next scene. Um, <laughs> Whitney and her mom decide to go to Chase's club. Mm -hmm. um, it's not open yet. Um, I guess he brings them in there early. Um, what does it say? Oh, I, I put down a note here. Whitney finds out that he named a drink after his friend, but not one after her. That was, to me, that's for the cameras. I you know. know, you know because you why are you why are you so worried about stupid little things? Um, right. But then again, this is Whitney. And to me... As for as confident as she is, I think she's very insecure. Mm -hmm. So this would be something that would would upset her. Um, and she also feels like she's in competition with this bar. Um, right. Uh, as the visit continues, um, she starts feeling like he was never really planning to move to Charlotte. I could see how she feels that way. But she's mm -hmm. thinking from an emotional standpoint. Yes. He was well, all set to Whitney. move. He, he was always right. He was all set to move before the bar business. But again, you're dumb. <laughs> this, this is why I'm team Whitney. As I'm, I just, I just feel the way I feel about these things. It's just you have to look at the long game, the big picture. It's like, but if Boo was killing it, you go where you go where the cash is. 
And then when you get there, you help, like I said, you help build her up. And then you do your, then you do your thing. You take a year to help build her up. And then while you're building her up, you can look and make plans for yourself. But you made a commitment. You need to, he should have stuck to that commitment. I'm not, you're, and I understand what she means by competition because she's looking at the fact that, well, you proposed to me first. Then this whole bar thing came through. So you're staying here for this bar. Uh, you know what? Since we already know the spoiler, right? Um, mm -hmm. I would love to know the timeline of when the the guy the the girl got pregnant. Just to look at like their well, interactions she, no, on she, this season. She's due soon. I think she's due what early December ish, or she just had the baby or something. So at least, um, at least January was conception. December, January was conception. Around that time. Let's we'll say December, mm -hmm. January, February. Within those three months. That's the timeline. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find... Sorry. Gina B said she had her baby already. That's, that's what I thought. So then, if she's had the baby already, it could have been a New Year's Eve baby. Right. So if they're filming February, March, where COVID is now coming in, she would have known she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. She may not have known she was pregnant, but she knew something was going on, definitely. She would have missed at least one period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So see, this is why I love timelines. This yeah. is why, because now I'll be looking at this show completely different. Okay, so what else? What else did I write down here? Um Okay, so they stay at the bar. Um, <laughs> he makes her her own signature drink. Oh, girl. I was mad. I was so upset with that. That took no thought. He just, let's just put some stuff in the cup and hope it tastes good. Here you go. I know. And she was like, oh, my God, this is good. Like, <laughs> really? Okay. Well, she finally settles down. She starts having fun while he's working. She's dancing. She's um, She's having a few drinks. Um, the club we find out isn't very full due to COVID. So mm -hmm. why are you in the club if you know it's not full due to COVID? But I digress. Right. Um, she heads out to go back to the um to the B and B to sleep. Um. Oh, and she, it seems like she isn't a fan of the bar after spending the night there. Mm -hmm. Oh, God almighty. Yeah, that one. So, <laughs> it's the next day. And um, Chase, Whitney, and the dog decide to go to the beach uh, for a walk. And they need to talk. Um, because this is the day that she's also leaving. So this was mm -hmm. a short trip. And, of course, <laughs> the dog is playing. It's going in and out of the water. And Whitney goes in apparently to wash off her hands and loses her engagement ring. First of all, this is where she's Why? stupid. I'm mad at her. First of all, when the ring is too big, you automatically have a resize. So things like this don't happen. So I blame her. Mm -hmm. It's all her fault. Quit boo hooing and crying. Go replace the ring. Simple. Oops. Let me add this. All right, so this was my takeaway from the night. This was an omen to me. Mm -hmm. uh, again, and, and you and I spoke about this. As soon as I get the engagement ring, I'm mm -hmm. going to make sure that it's sized properly. Mm -hmm. and, and while I'm at the jeweler, I'm going to go and get it appraised to make sure right. that it is what he says that it is. And then I'm going to also take that appraisal to get it insured. Exactly. Just so that if anything like this happens, I'm not out completely. Exactly. You know, and I thought his response was a bit telling. 
because, you know, he was kind of one way to her. And then in his, like separately, he was just like, well, okay. damn. Yeah. Right. It was kind of like stupid um, yeah. what she did, but. I took it as like she needed to wash him away just like she that, that ocean washed her ring away. <laughs> just saying. Just, so I'm just mean. saying. So honest, though. Oh my God. So, so we can all see where this season is going the yep. same way that that ring went. Um, Whitney and her mom, they decide to, um, they're driving back and they're talking about the ring. Whitney, of course, is upset. Mm -hmm. um, they're also talking about COVID. She probably, you know why she's upset, right? Why? Because she probably paid for that ring, that's why. <sighs> I'd be upset it too. It was like I was looking at pictures of it online. It was kind of large. Right. So either that's some really good cubic zirconia or Shiraki crystal, or she didn't pay for it. She didn't pay for that ring. So I'll keep well, I'll we'll just keep that in mind. Another another thing for me to think about, Jesus. And um her mom says to her that she thinks that they need to slow down. Mm -hmm. And think about it before they get married. Mm -hmm. um, Chase calls while they're driving. But then I thought the the best part of the episode was when um, she calls her um, her dad about him working and finds mm -hmm. out that he's still going into the office. Right. And she makes a decision because um, her brother picked up. Um, she makes a decision with her brother to keep her mom with her. Right. And maybe the brother can talk to the dad about not going into the office because they are older. They yes. are in high risk um, categories for the, the, the COVID. And she like, I can, I felt her in that moment. I only have my mother left. I don't want to lose my mother if, if I can prevent it. You know, right. and and I related to her in in that last scene, um, oh, yeah. and I and I was all here for it. Yes, you know, sometimes you have to make decisions. You know, the 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 children do become the parents at, at yep. one point, and you step in. and And she said, "No, mom, you're coming with me until we can figure out what dad is doing." Well, and it ended saying, on a like, really good note. Like, like the first, the first couple months i didn't leave the house it's a, it was literally once a week to go get groceries and come back mm -hmm. or we we started having them delivered because i said like i can't mm -hmm. leave um my grandmother's like almost 90 my mother's like almost 70 i'm like i'm not mm -hmm. going out here and catching some you know, just I, i'm not gonna be the one to take you out i'll put it that way yeah that's yeah. my thing and that's just the way it is like you do what you need to do for your parents. And if that means making these decisions, like, okay, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Do I just say so? And no, because you're gonna make the wrong choice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I was I was like, go with me, go with me. Yeah. Go. I was and, and in thinking. a way, the frustrations for the entire rest of the, the episode like were forgotten. I was actually relating to her in those final minutes of that episode. And it was kind of like the old show that I used to watch. And that's it for the episode. Any it final thoughts on episode. it? It was a good episode. It was. I it was. It was, it was an even pace and you mm -hmm. get to see, I kind of feel like I got to see everything mm -hmm. versus, you know, it'd be like chopped up and I had to try to figure stuff out and, you know what I mean? So this, I felt this was really, really good episode. Okay, me too. So we'll look forward to seeing it again next week um, if mm -hmm. they have a new episode. Now it's on to Welcome to Plathville. This is the second season of um, the, the series. And um, we saw the third episode and it's, um, the title was Can't Stop the Girl. And um, basically, I was in and out of this the first okay. season. I wasn't a dedicated watcher. Um, I thought it reminded me of the Duggars a little bit, mm -hmm. but I didn't invest enough to to determine whether that was true or not. So I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, 
So I'm kind of like catching up now that three of the kids have left the home right. and are living on their own, which I was like, wait, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the oldest boy got married. Um, Ethan and Olivia? Ethan, yeah. Ethan, Ethan and Olivia, right? Both were 22. Okay. And then Micah and Mariah, they've also left the house. These are additional yes. siblings. And they live together mm -hmm. in a home separately yes, from separately. Ethan and Olivia. Okay. Right. All right. So Olivia, who's into body piercing, has decided she wants to get a, 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 belly, a belly ring or whatever you call those. Um, and Ethan isn't too sure about it. <laughs> it's just, I it's just, it's just, he's, he's like, I don't know, like, because he's like, I'm not really into that, but she wants to do it, it's her, her body, so okay, I think with him, he just, like, he has never been, like, he's never experienced or known anybody, um, mm -hmm. about, like, you know, he's never been exposed to that, so he's, like, completely, like, out of his element, which is kind of cool. Hmm. I think he's just slower to adjust. Like I'm gonna give, I'm gonna cut him some slack because these kids haven't experienced the bulk of the stuff that the rest of us have. Right. They've kind of been isolated. So I can see why he's wondering about that. But then again, she had a valid point. Um, you were iffy about the nose ring and then it turned out that you like that. <laughs> why not the belly ring? Right. Come on but now. then, the, but he was quick to say, "Well, there's some sexual position we can't do for a month." That kind of killed me. That killed me. Like, yep. You, you, because you, then it all boiled down to him having sex. Okay, right. now like, you're not too sheltered. You're not too. You're not too like out there. That was just too funny. What is his priorities? <laughs> right. <laughs> but this shows that he kind of like he's coming. He's breaking out of that. That like that shell because I don't think he would say that before. I don't think he would say that if we were with his parents. Mm. You know what I mean? So he's, I like, I just like them, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to bring up that this is the whole family, but right down the line here are the two, like the house is divided. Right. Um, okay. So um, this is also their first, like they don't celebrate holidays or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, this is their for first fourth of july that they're going to celebrate they don't even know why you know you get fireworks or anything like that um which is a little odd mm -hmm. and and meanwhile um the parents um the parents are hosting um a family from australia who are supposed to be renting their old home right who have been traveling the world with their children. Mm -hmm. Like they have a similar setup where like they don't put their kids in school and they do homeschooling. And they they thought instead of just keeping them one place, they would take them around the world and, and show them that way via, you know, increasing their education. Right. So now they're making a stop where they're at and they're renting out um, the Plas other home. And the mom, Kim, Kim is her name, right? Yes. She goes back with some of the other girls to clean up the house and get it ready for rental and goes into the closet where, um, what's her name? Mariah. Uh, Mariah, Mariah. Mariah spent Mariah. a lot of her time. And she has all of these like song lyrics taped up on the wall. And the mother is now realizing that the lyrics are, are a bit dark and how much pain her daughter was going through. How do you not know that? Because she was, the mom seems to be so focused in her way and the way she wanted to do and how she was going to raise her children. She never took a step back to really mm -hmm. listen to her children from, from my perspective, mm -hmm. because generally mothers and daughters will speak and talk about things. And what the, for what I can tell what the mother and father are doing, like they made mistakes in their younger days. So what they've done is they've, kind of over sheltered over protected because they didn't want the kids to make the same mistakes they made it's like okay that's understandable but you can't shield them to the point of they're stunted emotionally and um mentally Men i guess mentally is yeah. right where like you
they don't have any yeah. like, social awareness, basically. I, I just don't understand this. If you made all of these mistakes when you were a kid, wouldn't you then make sure that your kids don't make that mistake? Not just totally shelter them like that? Just, I yes, don't understand their rationale in doing what they've done. Like what she's done is instead of guiding them and like kind of walking beside them on their road to adulthood, what she's trying to do is be before them and drag them down the road she wants them to go down. So that's what stunted them. Mm. I also heard that she didn't want Ethan and Olivia on, on this season because she didn't want them to see the other kids. She and feels, TLC okay. wanted them on the show. Right. So mom feels that the older kids aren't behaving appropriately. Does she think that they will corrupt the other ones? Like, that's, that's, what, that's, what she, that's what she said. That's what she said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's exactly what she said. She's like, I'm seeing some things in the older kids, and I don't want that to rub off on the younger ones. But they're all your kids. Right. Like, <laughs> my God. Right. I don't also, have kids, but I could yeah. not see myself. I couldn't see myself dashing away. Like three children. Well, the, no, they didn't. That, but they did. You, you have to remember, they didn't dash away. Um, Ethan, Olivia decided to cut them off. And that was Ethan's decision. They just said, "We're we're done with you. We want nothing to do with you." So that was Ethan and Olivia. Um, what happened with Mariah and Micah was she expressed that she didn't like what they were doing and the way they were behaving. So she gave them the option: "Well, to stay here, you need to do X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. if you don't," you can leave. They chose to leave. So she mm. thought by giving them an ultimatum that they were coward and they didn't. God. So it's not like she like jettisoned them, them away. They made their own choice. And she didn't and she didn't expect them to make a, that choice. I don't think she really expected her kids to leave. If I'm being really honest. And then the other I issue with you on that, because okay. as a mother, I wouldn't expect my kids to like if I was being that suppressive and controlling, I wouldn't expect them to leave because I have I have I, in my mind, I I believe that I have stunted their ability to defy me, you know, and and I guess it would have been a shock to her. Good Lord. And the oh. other issue with the no one that no one brings up is the simple fact that the dad is not really present. You can tell mm. it's the mom running the show completely. She mm. has basically whooped that man into submission. Wow. Because he never, he never like really interjects. He's basically like, it's like Kim is Beyonce and Barry is just like Michelle Williams, like humming in the background, <laughs> co-signing. So that's another issue. Like that scene where he's talking to, what's his name, Isaac? Mm -hmm. That was so awkward. Oh my God. I don't, I don't get the impression. Isaac is the, the Australian. No, the boy. Uh, no, the little boy. Oh. The four, 13, 14 year old. I can't keep up with all of these children's names. I'm, I'm sorry. just learning them. Oh my Lord. But I also found that the interaction with the Australian family was weird because they were talking about all the different countries they'd gone to, the kids, you know, the, the one little girl said that she likes this particular country, you know, like they, they're learning. And I don't think that they suppress their kids as much as the Plas do. No. And then to hear the Plas talk and that one girl said, I don't think I'd ever want to leave the farm. What? What? Lydia. So what are you supposed to do? You're talking about Lydia, right? I think so. I don't Lydia, know. Name. Lydia is the the next daughter. She's older. She's not one of the little she's ones. She's like fifteen ish. Yeah. 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 She's like the like what they consider uh, to be like the perfect child. Oh. Like she like does everything they say. She picks up after them. She does everything in the house. Yada yada yada. Like she's the one who really is like the model child. So wait, they have a, like, it's a farm. So all of these kids are supposed to work on the farm. Is that the deal? Or they 
will go out and get jobs in the real world. I don't understand this. You're right. But Mama P has a good point. The parents are a big controlling on minor things, but the older kids letting the young ones do things they know is against family rules and telling kids not to listen. The parents is wrong. I agree. Mm -hmm. You let you tell your kids, you mind mom and dad, do as they say do. Then when you're older, you can when you move out, you can make your own choices. But to to, to tell your siblings to blatantly dis, to disregard your parents is not right. True. Oh my God. I don't know. I just don't think they're preparing them for the real world. If they're just going to stay there and be on the farm and, and work the farm and not have to get a real, you know, an outside job, mm -hmm. then great, fine dandy. But mm -hmm. there is still going to come a time where you're working the farm that you need to know how the real world works. Like, aren't mm -hmm. you going to be selling your produce or your your stock or whatever it is that you do on the farm to people outside? I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Oh, my God. I think I'm just making this worse. OK, so they go to the, the fireworks store and um, Olivia starts talking about um, her mother-in-law, Kim. <laughs> Olivia, yeah. Um, did you see the 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 um the fireworks box that said it was the mother-in-law? Yeah, I so saw I was just like <sighs> but wait, they're getting an awful lot of fireworks. I hope I thought that was a bit much for your first fourth of July. <sighs> I was like, wow, I could just see them losing fingers or a hand. Um but yeah, that that scene was kind of scary for me. But it was also interesting that that um, Olivia picks that time to start vocalizing uh, about about her mother in law. It's a little odd. Um, I would I would have done that. <laughs> that conversation would have been kept between me, Ethan, and the the the, the in laws. You mean um, Mariah and um, the other boy? Micah? No, Olivia, I, I just don't think that you don't you don't speak about that's still their mother. Exactly. So, that's why I thought it was odd that she picked as, that time to do it. Right, as far as Ethan and Mariah go, uh, not Ethan, uh, Micah and Mariah, that conversation shouldn't be had in front of them. If it's just mm -hmm. you and Ethan, completely fine. Because yes, you're married. Because yes. you're married. Okay. All right, good. We're on the same page with that. Um, so, um, uh, okay. So at the very end of the episode, they light those sky lanterns um, and release them. Um, and Mariah admits that she's never going to look back and she's only going to focus on her career and her personal growth. Mm -hmm. And out of all of them, like I see her as, as someone who can get somewhere and do something with herself. Like she's got multiple jobs. She's really trying to, to integrate herself into this new environment that she's in mm -hmm. it, all the while knowing and recognizing all of the shortcomings that she had as preparation or lack of preparation to be out in this world. She's mm -hmm. not stupid. I, I really like Mariah a lot. Well, quite honestly, the way they're handling it, I kind of like the, all of them because of this. They were able to sit down with their parents, tell them how they felt, and they weren't really mean or judgmental or mm -hmm. like angry. They were just like, mm -hmm. Now that we're out, we kind of feel ill prepared and we hope that you learn mm -hmm. from this. And I really like that. I really, really like that. And I think they were able to get through to the parents a little bit, like keep doing what you're doing, but be more cognizant of the world exists outside of the, out, out of the farm and out of our house. Yeah. I don't That's know. It, I like, I think I'm going to watch it this season just from watching this episode. I think I'm going to watch it because next, next um, episode, I think we'll, I'll get to learn more about Micah and this girl that he's seeing, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
I want to, I want to, I thought this episode was more focused on, on Mariah. Um, and next episode will be Micah's turn. So that'll be cool. I'm going to um, put the link in here if anybody wants to call in and share some thoughts on either one of these shows. We'd love it. I know we've been rambling on for a little bit, um, but these were really interesting shows mm -hmm. that you guys suggested for us to, to take a look at. And I'm kind of wow. glad that I circle back to them. I like them because they're different. Because yes. it shows a different way of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, growing up in Berkeley, um, not growing up in Berkeley, growing up in Oakland, going to Berkeley schools, I was always exposed to other cultures well, and other ways them. of I like them they're living. So to me, mm -hmm. it was good. Are you serious? You're welcome. You're watching Welcome to Plantsville. It's so boring. Ah! I like it. You know what it is? It reminds me of like the original TLC reality shows. And Wait, not 90 Day that's... Fiance. It's, it's basically the Duggars, but just yes. more attractive children. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in the same, yeah. it's in the same line, so I like it. Oh, I think it's so boring. I watched the first season. I was like, never again. This but you know, I didn't complete the first season. And Me I would either. agree with you, Ablavi, on that. But Me now either. that they've got three that have escaped, um... I just want to see. But they said that Ethan and Olivia are getting a divorce, right? Oh, they it, are. It, 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 it's on. It's, they're on the verge, from what I understand. It, they're well, really I saw. Close. I saw. Um, what is it? She gave an interview early in the summer, and she was like, she filed divorce. So I don't know if that's. <gasps> I wonder if he wouldn't let her get a a, a piercing in her no no place. I mean, I just think this show is pretty boring, but it's better than OC, and that's saying something. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why we dump, that's why we dumped the OC. No one's watching that, not on purpose, anyway. But you know what? To be honest with you, I think that Salt Lake City would have done better if it was on TLC. Ooh. I just think. I, I just, just think. I, I just don't think it's going to work on Bravo. Like, because TLC has done the religion thing before, you know? Mm -hmm. I just think that the time slot is just horrible. It's just dumb. I think the day and the time slot, it should have come on on Thursdays at 9. But it's yeah. not just that. Southern Charms numbers have been awful. Potomac has been awful. So, you know, we can't just blame it on time. I don't know. I... <sighs> The content has been repetitive from, from city to city to city with regards to the housewives. It's just become a one trick pony. Let's get a scandal. Let's release it early. And then let's disappoint all the viewers when we finally do show the, the crap footage that we managed to get and let them all realize that it was no biggie to begin with the stupid scandal. It's just a bit repetitive. Oh, and the gang up on one person mentality, I'm done with that. I yeah. actually love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, oh, I do because it's oh because I found the person to be ganged up on always so weak. Like I, you should stand in your thing. I said it. I meant it. Mm. Like I like Lisa Vanderpump. I just thought how she left was just such a weak it was just a such a weak move when she left but she uh, had two seasons of being ganged up on wasn't it season i know four. but puppy gate really puppy gate was a piece of crap oh dumb. my god that was just dumb but, but like i told somebody if candace didn't get her 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 um she didn't get a one two what would have potomac season been nothing Hmm. We all know that, but when, yeah. that's my kind of. I think that's why I like Plasville and uh, Whitney. They're just di they're just a different style of reality TV that breaks up my Bravo contrived storylines. This seems a little bit more authentic, even though it may, may not be all the way, but it's, it's different. So However, TLC. I'll differ with you with regards to Whitney because I'm beginning to believe that she staged that engagement. She turned to the dark side and started producing her, her own life story. 
Who? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I could never get into that show. What show? My 600-pound life. Like, no offense. <laughs> every time I watch it, every season I watch it, I lose a ton of weight. Because I'm like, shit, I never need to get to this place. So I'm, like, eating healthy. Like, it scares the shit out of me. I honestly, wa- I do watch that, but I only watched it for Dr. Now. I'm sorry. He's my favorite. But don't you watch and you're like, like, okay, I'm not shaming her. We all have, you know, what we think is healthy and not. But, like, I really do worry about her when I see her. I think she's lost some weight. Because I was looking at images um, Mm -hmm. for for the show. And I think she has lost a bit of weight. Um, Unfortunately, it's beyond her control with regards to the weight issue because she has that ovarian syndrome, something or the other. I don't know. Hi, Dr. Sola. No, no, go ahead. I just don't, I think, oh, I just think that with Whitney, my thing is with her, like, you know, if you want to be bigger, have at it because I like to eat and I don't get, let anybody tell me not to eat. But at a certain, like, when I see her, it's the same thing with this is us. Like, I realize that, like, you you should love your body any way your body is. Mm-hmm. But I just worry about her long-term effects. With Because isn't she, like, is she 600? No. No. How, no. how much is it? 300? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A year, three, or, three or four. But I think she's down into the threes now. Because, yeah, because she was, like, in 600 yeah. when we met her. She was? I don't think she was that big. Uh, Christy, three thirty-five. Okay, thanks, Christy. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was, cause she was on my six hundred pound life. She was. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I I think it's I the think- whole thing with like I I personally think I don't. I'm not shaming her. I'm glad she's losing the weight and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I just I just worry about her long term health. Cause like she dances and does everything. I just worry, like, I don't want us to see her have like a stroke or something like that, God forbid. Well, the thing is, is that there's not much that she can do to lose that weight due to the medical condition that she has. Um, The best thing that she can do is to try to stay active Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure that she keeps her blood pressure down, her and you know eat healthy and keep her cholesterol down. Even though she's predisposed to quite a bit of those things based on her parents' um, health. Oh, um, I'm saying correct. she wasn't on six hundred pound life, they say oh, that she was wasn't. Oh, okay, um, but yeah, like. <sighs> she's been dealt a really rough hand. Mm-hmm. Where I where I lost it with, with Whitney last season was I started seeing her believing in her own hype and starting to create her own storyline. And I said, I wasn't going to watch this season, but now I'm, I'm back and I, and I'm watching again. Hey, Gata Tua, do you watch any of these shows? Hi everyone. Um, so I watched the two just for you guys. And what, what did you, you think? So, uh, for uh, Whitney, mm-hmm. I think when Harin got washed, I think, I don't know, I feel like that's a story line they're trying to create with the whole ring issue. But if I was her and that happened to my ring, I would run first and I would run far from the man and never look back. Because I don't know, I don't even think the dude is in the relationship. I think she is in the relationship alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah, she is in it alone. And even when the mother was saying, like, you guys need to slow down and whatnot, I don't think she needs to slow down. I just need to think, I, I think they need to stop. Mm. Because I, I feel, you know, like when you're, you, you're at a certain point in your life and you feel, okay, now I'm ready to become someone's wife, I'm ready to become this and that, but then you're so desperate, you're getting the wrong person to do that with. Mm. That's what I what, that's what I saw in her. No, I got to look. Like, like, we were talking about that earlier, how like she's like, what, 36 or so? So mm-hmm. she's getting to that point, like, man, if I want to get married and have kids, this is kind of like the my now or never stage. So I get it. 
But but I feel that's like such an old school type of thinking because you can have a kid in your fifties currently. You can have a kid in your when you are hundred. You just need you just need to freeze your eggs. You can be someone's wife at whatever age. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be that serious that you would jeopardize your happiness and your money. Because one, she is a breadwinner, but she's the one who seems to be sacrificing a lot. I, I haven't seen what this dude literally has sacrificed for this relationship. I'm not seeing. But see, that's the problem with the show because it sends a bad message to people who are of her size and want to get married. It sends a really bad message that you have to pay for a man, you have to do everything for him, and then he goes and gets pregnant by a woman he actually wanted to be with. It sends a horrible message. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. Like, if I have the same struggle and I'm looking up to her, I would settle for anything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I would go to an extent to seem like I am doing well in my life when I'm not. And I don't think that's a proper way to, to, especially for someone with the conditions she has, you cannot add on to your problem. Like, I, I would say choose a struggle. You can't have that. And th- there's no way I think that you have to have a mind to be happy. You can be happy alone, I think. You okay. can. Yeah. So Plantville reminds me of, um, I don't know what religion they are, Mm-hmm. But it reminds me of a certain religion we have here in Kenya, and I think it's also in a couple of countries, whereby the parents are very strict, the kids don't go to school, they literally, you're literally homeschooled, um, um, you are, your movement is very restricted, you have to say what your parents, you have to go according to what your parents tell you, mm-hmm. so um what happens is if you end up going against what your parents are telling you you become excommunicated from that church and religion itself and you also become uh, disowned by your own parents and it can be something as trivial as piercing your ears Mm. yeah and so until um, recently was it last year is when we started seeing a few of them, like people, um, like people my age, I would say millennials, trying to veer from the actual, from the strictness of the religion, and trying to go out of their way and explore the world. So for the first time, um, there was even an uproar where there was one lady from that particular uh, religion or sect was. Uh, took pictures and uploaded them on Instagram. And there were not any sort of fancy pictures or anything. They were just normal pictures. She was modeling her, she was modeling dresses. And you can imagine she got kicked out from her uh, her parents' house and she got owned by the parents and there was an uproar and she was told she needs to take down the pictures. She had to apologize to us, yet I didn't see what was wrong with that. But yeah. Um. So I feel I feel that family is too um, close-minded and put on their way, but this other group of people who are now veering from the teachings, quote unquote, of that family, is, is are going to cause a bit of like a shake-up. So you'll have two factions whereby there are those ones who believe in what we believe in, and there are these new ones who are trying to figure out what else is out in the world? Because you can live in a bubble and when you let out into the world, you realize you literally don't know anything. And and that's a funny thing because this, this sect I'm talking about, you would never find them in formal uh, workplaces. Sorry if I'm sounding a bit um, stereotypical, but you wouldn't. You would find them um, either they're farmers or they own businesses or things like that. But the ones who actually veered off and ended up going to like formal schools is when now you would say this is the first person to be in a formal working. That because that's what I see here. Mm. I like that. So we've had our hour. Yeah. So what I want to do is hear like. What are you looking forward to in these shows moving forward? Like, is there something that stuck out to you? Who do you want to go first? Uh, let's go Gatsu Tua since you came late. 
I, I feel like I'm waiting for Whitney to just, you know, like get that smack on the face and wake up and realize this relationship is not for her. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have to keep on um, renting a man for that. And I think she has a lot more going on for her to have to do that for herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also she needs to remember her parents are kind of um, vulnerable, so she shouldn't. I wouldn't want to put my parents through any of that, especially if I feel they are also not um, having. They're also having health issues. I should be a bit selfless to them. That's yeah, I'm just hoping she wakes up. For Plathville, um, I've just seen a comment with someone saying homeschooling has nothing to do with being a bad parent. I have not said when you're homeschooled, you're actually terrible. Because I have friends who are homeschooled and they were, they're literally they're, they're geniuses. Yeah, I'm talking about this idea of believing there's only one way of doing something. And you're thinking there's no other way. So when your children hear and find out another way of doing something, then they're actually successful at doing it. You still want to tell them that that's not proper. That's what I was talking about. Well, the biggest issue with their homeschooling is I don't understand how the mother is qualified because she never finished college. I, I didn't realize to homeschool, you you couldn't have a degree. You, I know you... Okay, during this period, this, this, period, this corona period, because most schools were closed and everything, People have been homeschooling their children, and I, I don't know. You need to have some basic uh, um, education so that you can also be able to understand what you're teaching to the person. But what I always see with homeschooling is when the child gets to a certain level, like they need to go to, they need to get a degree or something, is now when you send them to formal schools because maybe your level of education does not allow you to offer such. Wait, hold on a second. So these children, she's doing the actual teaching out of books. She isn't registered with one of those um, online homeschooling things. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm just well, asking the question. So no, it would be a religious right with her. It it's like oh. yes, they're re- that's that that's what they keep not showing you. They are very into that religion. Oh, that, yeah, that's also the, the the feeling I got from watching them that there's something religious about this whole um, arrangement. It's not just a choice that I have decided to homeschool my children. I feel it's something religious. Oh, oh so it's like school, but you're just so you have an instructor when you homeschool them. You just are like making sure they're on the thing, right? Like, 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 I thought, like, when you homeschool, like, you are actually, like, how Heather McDonald says, you're following the curriculum, you're signing right. up, and you receive, like, the coursework, and you, See, like, the kids have to follow it. That's what right. I thought. That's I have opposite. a cousin who homeschools, and she's a fundamentalist, too, but mm-hmm. she has a degree in teaching. So I didn't, I didn't realize that you could just be anybody because everybody I know who homeschools, their parents have a degree in teaching. Because how can you teach your child if you haven't gone, like, I mean, most people don't take calculus. If your child's really smart, how do you teach your child something you don't know? It, do you, is it required with the state? I'm basing this off the Duggars because the Duggars, like they, remember they have like the school room and they have like computers set up and like their kids are homeschooled, but they're like signed up in like the K-12 program or something like that. I don't know. But they are giving lesson plans. Wait, Mama, you got to give lesson plans to give your kids oh. and there are instructions. Okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah. For, exa- for example, okay. in California, calculus is not required to, to graduate. So there will be no need for you to know that. Oh my God! Why didn't I know that? So, yeah. it makes sense. I know. I know. Here, we uh, kids are being homeschooled, and will continue being homeschooled for a while when, because uh, schools are closed and everything. Because sometimes you can be at a place where you have no network connectivity, so you cannot connect with your school with your teachers. So your parents take up that role, and they don't necessarily have to have a degree. But then, you cannot do it to the to the highest level because you can only offer what you know so then how do your children do state tests then do they just go in for the state test yes yes, 
when, when you go to school and you do a test, then when you're done, you're given your your uh, your grading, then you move on to the next level. So then everything essentially is like college online. You have an instructor and they teach you the lesson and then your yeah. parents just there, obviously when they're young to put it on for them and when they're yeah. older to make sure, okay. So but also now, but also now, the parents are being told that they're being given part of the work. So the, the the teacher will give you instructions online, but then the bulk of the work falls onto the parents. So they they're way in a they're in kind of a way trying to move from just the teachers teaching to also the parents teaching, because they realize not everyone is able to keep up with the online schedules of 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 of, of teaching. So the parents now are literally involved until about um two months ago when a few things eased up and people had to start going back to work nice so then what do you do for classes like art and music um okay let me see do i even know anyone in school now? i know at some, okay when i was in school at some point they said art and music was not um um a major if I can call it that. So it was part mm -hmm. of the system. And if you wanted to do it, you pay someone to teach you that. So I don't know whether they brought it back because what I know is people would rather pay for art classes and music classes from, from uh, professionals of the art and music uh, world. No, and for, for Heather McDonald, I'm not trying to be elitist, but I would not go to no school that a teacher didn't have a degree. It's like you wouldn't go to no doctor that didn't have a degree. So I don't understand why that was a question to ask. I'm just specifying. I'm thinking if you're going to invest in homeschooling, you're essentially going to be a surrogate teacher. So it would be important to know about education. I think what, what I understand, most people I know were homeschooled, and there's only a few, They their parents did it. Um, due to religious reasons, but then once the kids, once they felt they could no longer teach their kids properly, yeah, then they let them go to school. That's the way it was when I was young. Okay. Cause I yes, and that's what I was saying, Jamal. Like you can offer it to a certain extent because that's what you are able to teach because that's what you know. But then when, when this person has to, even if you're homeschooling and this person has to move on to the next mm -hmm. level for us, like you're graduating from, um, from um, what do we call, um, locally we call them primary schools now to secondary right. schools, mm -hmm. you have to go and do the national exams. So okay. you have to register your child in a school to do the exams, to sit the exams or in a center to sit the exams. Mm. Interesting. So literally, they still have to do the the national exams. Right. So yeah, exactly. they have to like they have to go. It generally was so when I was out here, they were called CBS tests. Wow. We had to take them for reading, writing, and math. So the the homeschool kids they would do their their schoolwork for the year, but then they would come at the end of the year or whenever the tests were given, they would take the test. So if they were able to pass that test they filled that requirement and they were able to move on. Because we have family, um, the parents homeschooled their, all the children, there were four of them, and they homeschooled all of them to until after the sixth grade. So from seventh grade to high school, they went to school with us. Interesting. Because I, parents, I just find it interesting because like, I mean, shout out to people who can do it because high school education in the States, I'm sorry, it is not enough to be able to teach a child. Yeah, it's just they if all in Europe, maybe, but in the states, it is not enough to teach a child. There are too many people who do not who I'm, there are only a few good schools, and I'm I'm sorry, I I don't see how if you're not on it or if you're not really maybe you learn it by just reading books. I I just don't see how you can do homeschooling. It's it is difficult for what I understand, but people do it, but they own the people I like I said, I going by what I know typically out here, sixth grade was about that cutoff to where the parents would start sending their kids to school. Part, part of it is like the parents would only do comfortably up until the sixth grade. Uh, but then as things started to get more specialized, 
starting in middle school, seventh, eighth grade, they felt, well, we can't do this properly. Plus, we want our kids to have, um, we want the kids to have social, social, like, you know, interactions. So they would send them to school from seventh grade, eighth grade to high school. Hi, Mama P. Welcome. Oh, hi. Okay. I have homeschooled for 19 years. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with a parent homeschooling. I went to nursing school. I didn't go to teaching school. But I have a child that's homeschooled her entire life and about to go to med school. So it's possible. You, so you went to, so you have an associate degree? Or do you have a bachelor's degree? I have. I don't have a teaching degree. You're saying unless you have a teaching degree, you can't homeschool. No, I'm not. I'm saying that it would be beneficial because but essentially, it's not beneficial. It doesn't matter. But your child, your, your child is going to medical school. This curriculum has books. It has tests. It has quizzes. It has activity books. It has everything. And then you have to take a test at the end of the year to pass. Correct, but if the people are not teaching their kids and they're not teaching them right, they're not going to pass the test in order to go to the next grade. Well, that's not true because a, a child can pass a test and not know anything. We know tons of people who have high SAT scores and don't know what to do. So, no, that's not true at all. Well, I can assure you on my side, it is it is true. Let me ask a question, Mama P. Like, I don't know anybody who's homeschooled. So I'm really coming from a place of ignorance on this. With your situation with homeschooling, okay. have you signed up with, with something online and you get the books, you get the curriculum and, and all of that stuff? Or are you doing Hello? it yourself? Okay, Hello? Hi, uh, Mama P, can you hear hold me? Or? Cut, you're cutting in. Oh, I'm sorry. It's staticky for some reason. Oh, dear. There, now well, I... Okay, I no, just wanted to I know have, if, like, um, you signed up with. There's, there's. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You have to, you, yeah, you have to sign up. Mm -hmm. But they give you a choice. You choose your curriculum. You can use Christian curriculum. You can use regular mm -hmm. curriculum. It doesn't. They don't tell you which curriculum to use. You just have to show that your child is improving from one year to the next year in core things. Okay. All right. So you are signed. So it's not you alone with no guidance teaching a child. You're actually signed up with like a, I don't know. I keep on thinking in my head K-12. I'm not even sure if that is like the appropriate reference. There, but... there it is. K-12. Mm -hmm. K-12 is a thing. Uh -huh. And that is actually what I used for the junior and senior year because I didn't do uh -huh. I don't know her very well and as much as mm -hmm. she needed to know. So I taught half of the classes and then she did the others online and then graduated with a 4.7 GPA. Wow. That's amazing. So obviously it works. It just, I get offended when people start trying to downgrade homeschooling because it is possible and it does happen. And some of the most brilliant people come out of homeschooling, but there are some really crappy parents that say they're homeschooling and don't really home homeschool. But the majority of us do. And we produce very, very intelligent people who care more about books and school and their future than worrying about what little Jimmy and Johnny did and having all this extra stuff. Okay, that's a fair point. You know, many famous presidents were homeschooled. But that's not what the issue is. The issue is, you know, there's there's nothing they say. The issue is how how is somebody going to homeschool if all they've gone to is high school? They there is uh, there's a difference. You learn more when you go to college. Wait, what it's, happened? It's not so much an issue. Like if you're at homeschool and you become a doctor, great. But I just don't think the average person in high school is doing well enough to teach a child education without any formal college, not in the States. Hey, I think uh, hey, Mama P, sorry you dropped down there. Um, hey, Queen Cascade, welcome. Hey, good evening, I everybody. Good evening. Connection. Connection. Yeah. 
Um, obviously, I've just not long come into this this part of the conversation, so I've only heard there's certain you. things. Now, in regards to my experience with homeschooling, there's been different periods of time where um, Lioness has been homeschooled. Now, at the moment, she's been homeschooled due to the situation with C19 because I've only just recently sorted out remote um, schooling, but it's still not a system that works in the way that um, I would feel safe for her to be able to be in school. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is based off my daughter's experience, she feels like she's learned more being at home than she ever did being at school. Um, I think... We have to be careful when we talk about education because of the fact of, I understand what you're saying, Abalave, I don't necessarily agree because of the fact that some of the most educated people that I've, I've met on the streets have been homeless, have come from different backgrounds and I've learned a wealth of information. Now, when it comes to obviously children, that's slightly a different kettle. We also have to remember how the school system is built. It's built to manufacture and produce what I call lemmings, because they need people to be able to work in industry, work in a society, and um, a type of what I would call here working class system. Our system isn't essentially built here in England. Um, they talk about entrepreneurship and things like that, but when you look at the way the school system is, that's not the way that it's actually set up. I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying, if you mm -hmm. do not have formal education, and you finish at 12th grade, from the states, the majority of people are not at the point where they can go and they can teach a child. Our education just is not like that. We don't have A levels like you. So if, you are, if you've stopped your education there, how are you able to teach a child? Because truly, if you live in the states, there are a lot of courses you don't have to take that are in other countries a given. So how can somebody that doesn't know, and if you've never used it, being able to teach a child? That's all I'm saying. I I would wonder about that child. Because they literally give you books to do it from. You have a teacher's yeah, book, you have a student's book. They tell you exactly what to do, what to say, and how to do it. But, okay, but okay, for, so for instance, you give the average American fractions. Most of them can't do it. If your parent can't do it, they can look at the book all the time. If they're not getting it, it's stunting the child's growth because they don't understand it. Okay, uh, Balavi, on that point, I'm, I'm discounting. No, because then the parents- I'm not good at maths. I'm not good okay. at maths at all. I'm not, the, I'm not the, I'm dyslexic, I'm dyspraxic, and I've got dyscalculus. So when it comes to certain things with me and not being able to educate with um, Lioness on certain things, that's when I rely on other sources of information, other material, other tutors, other people that can help me out on the things that I'm not good you get at. Tutors. Yeah. Okay. So you get mm -hmm. tutors. Okay. I, I think all of you, all exactly. and Mamuti and Queen, all of you are saying the same thing, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can homeschool someone without having resources to do that. Mm -hmm. And two, you need to register the person you're homeschooling, both yourself as yeah, a and tutor. They have the books, the wonderful resources. Yeah. Yes. And then also when you register yourself, you are provided with a community yeah. that is also doing the same so you can tap into that community and get resources in areas you're not able to do. But what Ablavi is saying, basic, you need to also be able but to also understand. But also if you're parenting, you... Oops. Yes? Yeah. If you're a parent and you, you love your child so much, you want them to have a good education, you're going to learn what you have to teach them. Exactly. That's what. That's why I was coming to you. Yeah. Have to be able to understand what you're also teaching. It's the same way a teacher in a, in a, in a normal school setting is ha, also needs to learn the things he so he or she is supposed to teach if they're not yes, good at exactly. teach. Exactly. And they also need to step out and find resources for that. So exactly. all of you are saying the same. Not thing. always. What about and quite honestly, even if kids are in a formal school building going to school, like my my friend, she has two or three tutors on rotation for her kid when she was still in, in a physical school. And I think she's in sixth grade now um, because she doesn't think that the, the school, the normal school is enough. But she has really high standards. And I keep on telling her she might be stressing her kid out. But well, that's her kid. <laughs> 
Well, I'm not. I'm not discounting yes, it. But for college, also, I did do a lot of online classes. School, you got twenty five rooms. As, but when I did online classes, it was like a lot of that information I had to know. A lot of that info. It wasn't. It was like a lot of work on my end. Then, as compared when you go to classes, but Mama, then in college. Mama P, what was that point that you were making just now? I'm trying to remember which one that I was talking because I've tried to say a couple things, but everybody's talking, so it's hard to get it in. There's, you have to learn what your kids want to know. I have a child who's autistic. They said she wouldn't read, she wouldn't do this, she wouldn't do that. I have her reading for at nine years old. If you have one on one and you have that drive as a parent to teach your child to be the best they can be, you can mm -hmm. do it. You stick a kid in a classroom with 25 other kids, they don't learn as well. Mm -hmm. I don't. Home yeah. is best for many kids, but a lot of parents. I now, oh, I will tell you, I gave up a lot to homeschool my kids. I gave up my career. I gave up everything. Wow. But I did it because I love them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying someone else doesn't love their kid. I'm saying that I thought it was more important to raise my kids in an environment that I knew was better for them than mm -hmm. to send them to a public school with 25 kids in a classroom that they couldn't obtain as much as they could if I was at home. So I gave up so that they could have that. But that's how much I think it's important. Someone else may not be able to. They both have to work two full-time jobs mm -hmm. and they can't homeschool their kid. I'm not saying that I'm better. But I'm also mm -hmm. saying that it does work and that people have to reach in and try to see it from another way and not put down some people who do things. And you know what? Nursing school does not teach you uh, government class of history and all that stuff. I've had mm -hmm. to read and learn stuff in order to teach it. But that's okay. But that doesn't mean that just because I don't have a degree in history that I don't know something enough to teach it to my kid. I can read. I'm, but I'm, okay, let me make this clear. There are critical skills that you learn the older you go. I'm not saying if you don't go to college, you are not educated. I'm simply saying in the social, in the society we live in, we place a high value on education. No, you did say that. No, you I said, said, if you don't go to college, you can't. I said, if you don't go to college, how will you be able to teach a child? Because simply there are things you just don't learn in high school. A high school degree and a college degree is not equivalent. And we're not going to pretend like it is. What I'm going to say is this. I think that... Nobody said it was, but any smart it. parent can teach. But I'm saying that I understand people look, because all colleges is reading books. I understand that. But even with reading books, some sort of, some sort of formal education would be, I would think, would be not, would, would be ideal because they don't just allow teachers to it would make it easier it would they don't just allow teachers to just to be teachers with no degree so i don't understand why having that situation for somebody homeschool is wrong because the person who's doing your curriculum has a degree do they not they have a degree but they're also given a syllabus in which the the same one that the teachers because are following the, the, same one that the, the parents are following essentially Correct. Okay. but they're education people in it when they make these curriculums they just don't think oh they're making these curriculums based on people degree based on what psychologists and everybody has to say i'm just stating as mm -hmm. i've been through our high school in america now granted i haven't been to everybody's but i know what we learned and i know the basics is not enough to get a child through it okay i know I that everybody's um, entitled everybody's entitled. Want, we know that the basics is not enough to get a child in america our education system is not there okay uh, can i interject what I'd yeah. like to say is this, when it comes, what we also have to look at is the individual child, because I don't know if this has been spoken before, but every child in the way that they learn and they're educated is different. Mm -hmm. Some people are visual, some people are verbal, some people it's written. So it's also about taking into consideration that child's needs. So being in that physical setting of being in a school, Abilavi, might not be the right thing for that child or those individual child. Yes, there are certain things that we learn being in those kind of social set settings that set us up for a different part, but 
factoring in the needs of the child is what is to be what I see is to be put first. Me as a single mother, I would love to have been able to continuing homeschooling lioness over throughout now I now I know what the situation is in terms of education in England and where I live and how schools really, really operate. And now she's in a different place. I would have loved to be able to continue just throughout where she is now at 14 to homeschool her. I'm not saying it's bad to be homeschooled. I think homeschooling can be I think homeschooling can be great for children who don't learn at the speed that children do at public school. But um, I do not agree with the notion that just because you have a child and just because you do not want them to go to formal schooling and be you and not having any education should be teaching that child. That is not something I agree with. Now, you may not agree with that statement, but I'm allowed to have it and I'm allowed to say I don't agree with it. No, and I understand okay. it's not that I'm even disagreeing with you. I'm just sharing my opinion. And then on top of it, being a parent, you have to remember that child is in school for what, six hours, eight hours? Yeah. We as parents are doing the rest of it, the ones that are taking into consideration what we should be doing as parents. We're the ones that are teaching them, teaching them the other side of what, what they're not learning in school. So therefore, as parents, it does hold weight in the fact that we're teaching children in any way. We're teaching them life. We're teaching them life skills in terms of cooking, cleaning, how to manage their money, how to start building, you know, um, trades for themselves and learning how exactly. to, to do a whole heap of things. So we also have to take into consideration the other roles that us as parents play outside of school in communicating with schools, in communicating with the education board. I agree with, I agree okay. with that too. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Let's just, let's just wrap this up because right now we're at the hour and a half mark. Okay. But I see what everybody is saying and what I'm gathering from it is that the parents have to be the one to determine what yeah. is best for their individual kids and what their needs are. And, you know, we can all have our own opinions and I'm glad that we can share it here and not feel like we can't say what we feel mm -hmm. and we can say it in a respectful manner. And that's what we've been doing. And all of these different viewpoints have been very enlightening for me because mm -hmm. I don't have any children mm -hmm. and I don't even know anyone who's been homeschooled. I am willfully inadequate in this conversation. but by hearing all of these different perspectives from different countries and regions, I feel like I have a greater appreciation for parents on a whole because it's so much more than sending a kid to school when you break it all down. And I think we can all agree on that. Like I don't disagree sure. with what anybody else is saying. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Barbados mm -hmm. has one of the For best sure. education just, systems I in the world. Don't people don't even know that because it's a Caribbean country. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot yeah. in terms of the first world and second world and the way that things are looked at in each country in terms of their education systems. I suppose uh, it's good. Good. For sure. Ours is, so, not, ours is not good at all. I so get you. No. Sorry. Sorry. So, um, I think we need to look at that this way. There's the proper homeschooling. One important that thing about homeschooling is you, if you keep your kid in a activity. I can't hear. Mama P, are you still there? I think Mama P was okay, having here. connection issues. Okay. It right. just I totally went blank and was nothing there. I was just saying mm -hmm. that homeschooling mm -hmm. yeah, it cannot be for everybody, but the people who homeschool need to keep their kids involved. If if you don't have other kids, my was a child for a very long time. She did competitive cheer. So she was able to be instructed by somebody else. She was able to be in goods, but she was just educated at home. Okay. Hey. And got the two of you had a comment as well. Yes, I was saying we need to look at homeschooling um, um, from like a proper homeschooling situation. 
as Mama Pia said, you sometimes even you have to you sometimes even have to give up your career to ensure that you're giving your children the best. Because you're also learning uh, along the process of teaching your children, you're coming to understand your children and where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And then this child does not have distractions they would ideally have in a formal school whereby you go at the pace of the entire school of the entire class instead of a pace of an individual. So you're able to teach your child a few things that may not necessarily be in the curriculum, like how taxation and things like that, which normally I would say we, we are never taught that in school. Mm. So now the issue is where we're mixing it up is this Plathville sort of homeschooling. That is where I have a problem with it because I feel it's not the proper kind of homeschooling. That was what was my dispute. Okay. I mean, no, I stand by it. I'm sorry. No. I'm not going to back down from this because the, the, it, I, I still, I get that other people, I get there are great people who can do it. I get that people are intelligent and they don't go to formal schooling and they do the best for their child. But as I see it with education and I can only speak it from my parents are educators and I had the help. I, and I know what school is about. I, I don't see how if you don't, if you want to homeschool your child, why you wouldn't go for education if that's what you want to do, because that would give them the beneficial at the end of the day. It could just be a plus to it. I'm not saying you don't, you have to do it, but I would say somebody who has an education major and has a leg up on a person who does it. But I love me, like, let me give you a situation that happens in my country. Most parents are working. They have gone to work. So now it's up to the nanny to to help the child uh to help in homeschooling the child because schools are not having resumed yet correct so you cannot start saying i need a nanny who has gone to um um has has an educational degree so that my child is able to learn what happens is you get someone who has basic knowledge like has gone to school even at the basic level of school mm -hmm. that they're able to communicate with the students However, when you're doing this homeschooling business, you are given resources and you can reach out to teachers and tutors who are able to help you where you're not able to understand. So you don't basically need a degree to be able to teach. I you guess so, because a nanny, I guess I could see it with a nanny. Because a nanny, a nanny, yeah, I could see it with a nanny. But as a but the same thing is as a parent. If you're going into this as a parent wanting to provide the best education from your child, you're already doing the cost benefits to be able to homeschool your child. So why is it so out of the ordinary for me to think that you would get a teaching degree? It's like I wouldn't go to no doctor that didn't have a medical degree and nobody would question that. So why is it such a well, one when I say is, that yeah, I'm not going to any doctor who doesn't have a well, medical that, degree? I think that what we what you're talking about is it's a bit to me, Blavi, is apples and oranges when it comes to a medical profession. What we're talking about is education at a certain extent is ever evolving, ever, ever changing. Let me give you an example. Okay. When I was about 30, my daughter's age, I was in the care system. Yeah, I was a part of this program that was put together to help train social workers. I, as a 14, between the age of 13 to 16, was going into universities and mm -hmm. teaching social workers, people that had one, two, three, four, five degrees, mm -hmm. what they needed to learn in order to be a good social worker. I didn't have any degrees in, in order to teach them. So it is possible, it is possible depending on the parent that wants to be able to educate and teach their child. It's a bigger commitment, but mm -hmm. it is possible. And like I said, it's, it's, it's to a certain extent, it's about the child. Some children won't do well in the kind of education that you're talking about. Even my daughter here, you can ask her for herself in regards to what she's learning and she's going to one of the best schools. I specifically moved into this area to get her into this school. So and you're basically not, saying you're doing teaching kind of like an apprenticeship rather than formal schooling. That's how you see it. Well, technically, if it wasn't for the whole pandemic, you would be in properly in school. I've had to take on a number of roles now that she's been homeschooled. So it is difficult for me as somebody who is dyslexic 
who's somebody that doesn't have the same degree as teachers, but it's a slower process for me, but I know the way that I learn. I'm a visual learner. So I've been able to pick up certain things quicker. But as I've spoken to my daughter about being homeschooled, she has learned so much more through being at home and being able to set her own pace and not having certain distractions and not having the attention of, you know, I don't know what it is in America in terms of your class sizes, but here in parts of England, we have big class sizes where the kids don't get as much attention as they need. So it, this at the moment, it works for her. I have to make the decision about whether she'll go back because I need her to be able to complete certain things that I'm not able to teach, but I know what my my pros and my cons to my situation are. Do you get what I mean? Every like the lady okay, mama. Sorry, you're saying that there are certain things you're better at that the school is not, and there are certain things that you lack that I guess a tutor could make up for. But at the same time, it's about knowing my child, knowing her. Yes. You know, her yeah, skill level, exactly. what she's good at, what she's bad at, where she needs help. Same thing that a teacher would do in terms of assessing the child, which you get through information packs and researching. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, see, I, it, I can get that. Yeah. It, it all comes down to what you feel most comfortable with as a parent and what you know your child is capable of and what you want for your kid. You know, where where Mama P was willing to make certain sacrifices for the sake of her children for homeschooling, you might not want that it, for your kids. You know what I mean? So it all comes down to an individual preference and the parent knowing not everybody, everybody, the needs of their kids. Yeah, it. True. And, and it comes it comes down to financial factors as well, you yeah. know, but in the end, as a parent, I'm I'm going on the side with that that parent is going to do everything for the betterment of their children, no matter what, you know, yeah, they'll um, do the best they can. Right. And if a pandemic rolls in. Yeah. Then, you know, you have to do the best that you can for your kids. And I think we could all be in agreement on that. And right now, Jamal has already checked out and left me because I've gone way, 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 way over. But thank you guys so, 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 so much for You're giving welcome. me all of this information. Hey, Jamal, thanks for coming back. Um, <laughs> I had to turn on my mic because oh. of the sound quality. That's what that's, we had too many mics open. So I just cut off my mic to listen and to. Um, look at the chat so you guys can have a discussion, mm -hmm. which is a very good discussion. Like I said, I grew up with some homeschool kids, so their parents only did what they felt comfortable with, and then they sent them in with general population. And I just found them to be, from my point of view, really cool. Some of them were ahead of us who were in school, so I always thought that was kind of cool. So you, it's a mixed bag. Like you said, every parent does what they feel is best for their child. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic if a parent can do it and homeschool their kids. Me, mm -hmm. I'm a visual learner. So if I could have been homeschooled, okay. I would have preferred that. So I'm definitely like, can see all sides, all points of view. Um, and a lot of parents I do know who I read and heard, like, you know, they do the best they can. Like some do have teaching degrees. Does it give you a leg up? Yes. Is it required? No. Because a parent's going to do only what they feel comfortable with. No parent is going to teach their try to teach their child calculus when they exactly. only got the geometry and they failed at that too. They're not yeah. going to do that. They're going okay, to outfit. as long as you have so, the materials. I, I, I say that's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, most definitely. I think with the proper yeah, education. they have. I know homeschool parents have to go through a system, mm -hmm. so it's cool. I, I, this is one reason why I started watching Platteville in the first place. To like, okay, this is homeschooling. It's different. I'm here for it. So anything that's for me, anything that's different or a different way of thinking about life or how to raise kids, I'm there for it. And this is why we have this channel to have these conversations because other channels won't have these kind of conversations because. They're afraid of making somebody mad. They're afraid of disagreeing with someone. It's not about here. Be respectful. Be kind. Explain your point of view. Listen. Take in. Learn. And we're good. Yeah. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much for, for calling in today and sharing your thoughts and your experiences. I have learned from it and appreciate it.
And I love all of y'all for, for chiming in with us. All right. Even you guys in the chat for holding it down with us during the conversation. <laughs> so, thanks, no guys. Thank and you have a great you. weekend. I'm going to drop Bye. all you guys down, okay? Goodbye. All right. Okay. Ah, Jamal, I thought you left me. Yay. I know the, the, the sound quality was I a little, I, I was really pushing it with six of us up there today. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I just, I muted, I muted, but mm -hmm. this is a great conversation. I like the points of view. Um, mm -hmm. Like our subscribers, are fantastic. Like I love the chat. Like they gave, they just have a lot of things to say. Yeah. Like, yeah. I enjoy the opinions most mm -hmm. of all like we have a great group we have like a very yeah. like insightful group so for me even though it's we got off topic i still felt like you know we use reality tv mm -hmm. to tie into life you know i think it's super important that we yeah we do mostly reality tv but life is so important and I think that having these discussions are good because I don't think we would have these, me personally, I don't think I would have these discussions elsewhere. So I'm definitely going to keep watching these shows, especially Plotville, because yep. the dynamic yep. is so interesting. Agreed, agreed. Because I feel like I'm, I, I'm a little behind the ball because I don't have kids and um, I don't know anybody homeschool. So I was completely ignorant in this conversation. I'm not going to lie. I have no point of reference at all, but um, we're closing it out. Bye, okay. everybody. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Most definitely. See you guys soon. Thank you.